What's up, everybody? Welcome to another uh, director ranking video where I rank every film from a certain director. I have done other director ranking videos in the past, such as Mike Judge, um, Todd Phillips, and Kevin Smith, along with a, a bunch of others too. Um, and but today, today I will be uh, ranking all nineteen of Tim Burton's films. Yes, ranked from. My, my least favorite to favorite um yeah this has been this has been a long time coming i've been mean to do this for a long time but i just now got around to finishing the ranking uh you know i i had two more movies to watch and i finally did um so yeah um all right so keep in mind of course personal opinions um there's there's going to be some there might be some shockers on here like the, I, there is a there is a a very like critically acclaimed Tim Burton film that is on here that is low on the list and there's also one that is uh not really talked about it didn't get a whole lot get didn't get a whole lot of praise like it should have um that I have high on the list so you know keep all that in mind also I want to point out um, a certain movie that you might even would say is your favorite Tim Burton film. Some people would probably say it. Um, there's a certain movie that won't be on this list, and that is The Nightmare Before Christmas. And the reason why it's, it's not on this list is because he didn't direct it. That's right, Tim Burton did not direct The Nightmare Before Christmas. That was Henry Selick. Uh, Tim Burton did produce it, and I think he wrote it, too. Um, but he did not He did not direct it. Um, that's, like, again, Henry Selick. And, you know, I will do a Henry Selick uh, ranking someday. Uh, I think he's only got five films, I think. Um, but, yeah, uh, but if you do want to hear... If you do want to know my, uh, want to hear me talk about Nightmare Before Christmas and want to know my opinion, well, I'll go ahead and say my opinion on that movie. It's a good movie. It's a very good movie. I would definitely put it, I don't know about top five, but definitely top ten if he did direct it. Um, I would put it in probably the top ten at least. Um, and, uh, if you want to hear me talk about more, just go check out my review that I did for it uh, a couple years ago. Um, yeah. It should be down there in my videos somewhere. So yeah, all right. So anyways, let's let's waste no more time. Let's go ahead and get started with my ranking for all of Tim Burton's films. Uh, yeah, all of his films, um, excluding Nightmare Before Christmas, of course. Also his short films too, like the original Frankie we Frank and Weenie and whatnot. Um, but yeah, all of his all nineteen of his feature length films that he's directed, uh, ranked from my least favorite to favorite. Let's get started. All right, so coming in at number 19, my least favorite um, Tim Burton film is Dark Shadows. Yeah, this movie is not good. Um, performances aside, I think the performances is probably the best thing about it. But even that, like, not really. I, like, Johnny Depp is fine. Uh, Eva Green was pretty good as, uh, I think she's the villain. She was pretty good. You also got Michelle Pfeiffer and Chloe Grace Moretz and, uh, Helena Baum Carter. Like, you know, she's in almost all of his movies. Um, but, yeah, you know, they're all fine. Um, they're all good. But, nah, this movie is just, of what I remember, I've only seen it once. I rem I remember it being pretty cringy, honestly. <laughs> I remember this movie being really cringy, and the humor just did not work for me, and the story didn't work either. Um, I think the only scene I actually liked was the Alice Cooper scene. That that's it. That I I did enjoy the Alice Cooper scene, but that's it. Um, but no, I didn't like this movie not one bit. Uh, aside from the Alice Cooper scene, and I probably will never watch this one again. I don't think I. I don't think I want to. So, yeah. Dark Shadows, that's uh, number 19. Okay, coming at number 18, we have Planet of the Apes, uh, which is probably a lot of people's least favorite. Um, I I get it. I completely get why people would say that this is his worst film. 
I liked it slightly better than Dark Shadows, but I still didn't like it either. It's, um, of course, a remake of the of the old classic from the 60s. Um, but yeah, Mark Wahlberg is the lead. He's not really that good. Helen Baum Carter, I think, if what I remember, she was okay. Tim Roth as well. Um, I did kind of like Paul Giamatti's character. He was kind of like the comic relief in the movie. I thought he was kind of funny, but that was like the only thing I liked about it, really. And the ending was the ending was so stupid and it made no sense at all. Um, but but yeah, and, and it's also just a boring movie. It's even more boring than Dark Shadows, but I just put it one ahead just because I didn't, I don't know. I liked it just a little bit better in Dark Shadows, but still didn't like it. So yeah, Planet of the Apes, that is my number 18. Okay, now here we go. Here's a controversial pick right here. Coming at number 17 is a movie that a lot of people love. They might put this at number one, if not maybe top three or top five, but I did not like this movie. I'm sorry, people. I think this is Tim Burton's most overrated film. I did not like it one bit. Real Well, aside from a few things, but my number 17 is Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Yes, I know. I know. And I was disappointed, too, because I wanted to like this movie. Okay, what I will say, the story is good. I do like the story. And uh, I like the cinematography. Uh, this The effects were cool. Uh, and all the cast was all good, like acting-wise. And even their singing voices were, weren't bad, either. But that's the thing right there. This is a musical, and of course, yes, I know it's based on a Broadway, like an actual actual Broadway musical, but I don't think it worked as a musical. That's probably an unpopular opinion, but I don't think this movie worked as a musical. I think this movie would have been a whole lot better if it wasn't a musical. Now, okay, if, if they would have took their time with the songs then that'd be okay. Like like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. See, that's the reason why Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is actually my favorite musical, because it takes it t- it takes its time with the songs. Like, it has a chance to breathe, you know, with just dialogue, and then every once in a while, there'll be a musical number. That's the only time that I prefer musicals, but no, a lot of musicals have very little spoken word dialogue and then and, and about 90% of it is just musical just them singing I don't like that and this movie yeah it does that a lot and it got really annoying I didn't really like the songs either to be honest um, the singing was was okay from the actors actually I did like Helena Bonham Carter's uh, singing voice she was really good um, everyone else was just okay but yeah, I didn't like this movie. Okay, I will say, I will say that the ending was not bad. The ending ended on a twist, and that wasn't bad. I I thought, like, yeah, I thought the twist ending was actually pretty good. But overall, I did not like this movie. I'm sorry, people that do like this, but yeah. You're probably going to hate me for putting it so low, and you're probably going to hate me for putting the next movie over this one. But yeah, I, I didn't like this movie. And that's my number 17 is Sweeney Todd. Okay, now those are the only three I actually don't like. The rest of these I actually do like. Now, a couple of these next few I just barely like. Like, I want to rewatch them, at least not often, but I still think they're okay. You know, they're decent movies, uh, starting with this movie. So, yeah, coming at number 16, like I said, you're going to be mad probably that I have this over Sweeney Todd. But my number 16 is Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't think this is a, a necessarily a good movie. Um, like,. Tim Burton tried to do a remake but have his own have his own thing with it and even the story he changed a lot 
some of it I thought was kind of cool of what he did, um, but yeah, it's it's a weird movie, but you know it's Tim Burton. Um, <laughs> but but no, I actually don't mind this movie. I actually kind of like it. I remember when I very first saw it. I saw it in theaters when it came out when I was uh, like a kid, when I was like eleven or twelve, and um, I really liked it then. I thought it was really good, uh, but. Rewatching it for the ranking, I can definitely see why people don't like this movie, but I still didn't mind it. Like, it was still okay to me. Um, yeah, Johnny Depp is a little bit annoying in this movie. Uh, Helen Baum Carter, though, she's pretty good as the villain, as the queen. Uh, and I actually do like the actress who plays uh, Alice. Um, Mia is something, I can never pronounce her last name, but I thought she was actually really good. I really liked her as Alice. I thought she was, she made a good Alice. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, not, not like a big fan of this movie, but I, I think it's all right. I don't mind it and I could rewatch it again. It's, it's fine. It's an okay movie. Yeah. That's uh, number 16. Okay. My number 15 is a movie that again, I want, when I first watched it, I really liked it. And then I don't know. After rewatching, I didn't like it as much. Uh, but yeah, that is um, my number fifteen is Mars Attacks. Um, and some people might get mad at me for that because there are a lot of people that like this one. This might be Burton's most divisive film, perhaps. Um, I th- I'm in, I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't like it, but I don't hate it either. It's just it's uh, it's fine. It's okay to me. Um, you know, there are a shitload of. Uh, of uh, celebrities, actors in this movie. <laughs> Too many, if you ask me. But I think most of them are pretty good, uh, or at least okay. Um, I, Jack Nicholson is pretty entertaining in the movie. Um, I, do, I do actually like Jack Black's uh, short little appearance in the movie. And I do like The Martians. The Martians are the best part about the movie. They're really funny. The Martians, they're, and the noises they make, the... Ah! <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, you know, this movie, it didn't really age well. Uh, a lot of the effects didn't age well, and the movie itself didn't really age well, but it's uh, it's okay. It's Maybe I could rewatch it, but not really anytime soon. I honestly kind of rather watch Alice in Wonderland again than this movie, but I do, of course, have this higher just because I do think it's a slightly better movie than Alice in Wonderland, but still not a great movie. It's it's fine. Oh uh, yeah, Mars Attacks is number 15. Okay, my number 14. Now, you might think I'm crazy for putting this over Mars Attacks. Uh, my number 14 is, uh, as of right now, his most recent film. That is Dumbo. Uh, yeah, his remake, if you, I guess you can call this a remake. It's more of a remake than the Alice in Wonderland. I will say that. But, yeah, his take on Dumbo, um, I didn't mind it. I, I actually kind of like Dumbo. Um, I thought it was really interesting that he uh, had to focus more on the human characters. And I know that probably takes people out of it, but I thought that was kind of interesting. It has a really good cast, too. you got Dan DeVito, Michael Keaton, uh, Colin Farrell, Eva Green again. Uh, and who else? Uh, oh yeah, Alan Arkin, and also Nika Parker, uh, who I know from the Last of Us TV show. She was in this as well. Uh, this was her first film, and yeah, I think all those actors were pretty good too. Um, yeah, um, like it's an okay movie. It's an okay movie. Even the effects aren't too bad, at least to me. Like I don't think they're that bad. The eff- some people might think they are, but but yeah. Like, the CGI, like, all the animals are CGI, but I, I think they look okay, you know? But, yeah, uh, Dumbo, that is my number 14. Okay, my number 13 is a movie I was kind of disappointed by. I wanted to like it more, but I thought it was okay. That is Sleepy Hollow. Uh, I think a lot of people might say this is one of, if not the most underrated Tim Burton film, and I, I get it, um... Like, it's, I don't think it did very well when it came out, but, uh, you know, as years went by, it became a cult classic. And I get it. I get it. It's it's not bad. It's pretty good. Uh, Johnny Depp is good. So is Christina Ricci as well. Uh, she's great. Um, 
And <laughs> probably my favorite thing about the movie, though, is probably Christopher Walken as the Headless Horseman. He was he was fantastic, and he never even said a word, but he was still great. Just that scream he does, ah! <laughs> it's, it's so good. Um, but yeah, you know, other than that, eh, it's kind of a forgettable movie aside from Christopher Walken, but um, it's still, yeah, not a big fan of it, but it's, it's fine. That is my number 13, Sleepy Hollow. Okay, my number 12 is an animated film that he did. He, he done two animated films. Uh, the, um, that is Frank and Weenie, and this is the full-length animated version, of course, not the, the live-action short film. I have seen that, actually. And from what I remember, it was pretty good. I don't know where I would rank it on here, but Shelley Duvall was in it, and uh, so was Daniel Stern uh, and the kid uh, from um, The NeverEnding Story as well. But, um, but yeah, the animated one, I thought was pretty good. I've only seen it once. I might rewatch it. Maybe around Halloween, I might give it another watch. Um... But I thought it was pretty good. The animation's really good, uh, and, the, and it looks great in black and white. Um, yeah, decent movie. Um, Frank and Weenie, that is number 12. Okay, m- number 11. All right, now I can finally pull out some of my uh, some of the movies I own from Burton. My number 11 is um, a sequel to a movie that he also did, and we'll get to that one later. But my number 11 is... Batman Returns. Um, I don't think Batman Returns is as good as uh, the first one, 89 Batman, but it's still a decent sequel. Batman Returns, I still think, is good. And, of course, Michael Keaton's great, but you also have Dane DeVito as the Penguin, which, for some reason, was nominated for a Razzie Award for one of the worst actors, and I don't understand why, because he was fantastic as the Penguin. What the fuck? I don't know. But he was great. And also Michelle Pfeiffer as well, who not only was great, but also was sexy as fuck in this movie. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Batman Returns, it's a good sequel. Um, oh, also Christopher Walken too, I should mention. He's in this movie. He's great too. Uh, I, I do like him better in Sleepy Hollow, but yeah. Um, but yeah, Batman Returns, decent sequel, but... Yeah, don't love it, but I, I, I still don't mind it. You know, it's, it's good. Uh, yeah, Batman Returns, that is uh, my number 11. Okay, my number 10 is another animated movie that he did, and that is Corpse Bride, uh, starring Johnny Depp and um, Helena Bonham Carter. And I believe Emily Watson, too, I think is in it as well. Um, only seen it once, but I thought it was pretty good, and I even decided to get it on DVD. But I liked it a lot, actually. I thought it was pretty good. Um, it is a little short, but I still thought it was a decent movie. Um, the animation's really cool. Uh, I like uh, I liked um, Helena Baum Carter's character a lot. She was really cool. I like how she looks too. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought this was a pretty decent movie. Um, Corpse Bride. That is uh, my number um, number ten. Number 10. Okay, my number 9 is a movie that is kind of underrated. Uh, I don't think it's a great movie, but it's it's pretty good. That is Big Eyes. Um, yeah, starring a- Amy Adams and Christopher Walken. Uh, or, sorry, no, not Christopher Walken. Uh, Christoph Waltz, yeah. But... Amy Adams and Christoph Waltz, they're both great in this movie, have great chemistry to, uh, together. This is a very interesting movie for Tim Burton. It doesn't even really have his style in it, but it's it's really interesting. Just about It's based on a true story about um, this female artist whose uh, husband gets all the credit for all the art she does. Um, and yeah, it, it's really cool, though. It's a pretty cool movie. It does get kind of ridiculous a little bit, toward the third act I remember especially with Christoph Waltz's character he gets a little like over the top and it was I was kind of like what? like I don't know I wasn't expecting that but but still a pretty good movie um, again it's another one that I've only seen once but I decided to get it on DVD um, I'll rewatch it sometime but yeah 
good movie, uh, Big Eyes. That is uh, my number nine. Okay, my number eight is um, the other Batman movie, Batman 89. Um, I like this a little better. Um, I remember actually both of these movies. I used not to like whenever I was a kid. I saw them both as a kid, and actually, <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. But when I was a kid, I actually preferred the Joel Schumacher Batman movies over the Burton ones. <laughs> I know, I know. But I did when I was a kid. Um, and I still kind of enjoy those movies just because they're they're bad, but they're funny bad, you know? But um, but now, of course, yeah, these movies are, are way better. But, um, but yeah, I didn't like 89 Batman especially. I thought that one was, like, really boring. But now, I I mean, it's it's a slow movie for sure, but... I like it now. I, th I think it's really cool. Um, might even be my favorite Batman movie. Not counting Joker. If you don't want to count Joker as a Batman movie, then then Batman eighty nine is pro is probably my favorite Batman movie. Uh, the score, the score is fantastic by Danny Elfman, and the score for the, for Batman Returns. I forgot to mention, but it was really good in that. And you got you know. Of course, Michael Keaton again, and Jack Nicholson as the Joker. He is fantastic. Uh, Kim Basinger, too. Um, yeah, really like this movie. Um, I really do. I do think the Prince songs don't really go well with the movie itself. It's kind of weird, but that's, I think, the only issue I have with the movie. It's a, it's a good movie. Uh, yeah, Batman 89 is my number eight. Okay. Here's another movie that you might be like, what? You like that better than Batman? I'm sorry, I do. My number seven is a movie that gets shit on way too much. I don't understand the hate for this movie. I actually like this movie quite a bit. Uh, it is a remake, and the, of course the original is better. I actually mentioned the original movie, too, just a little bit ago when I was talking about Sweeney Todd. But, yeah, my number seven is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Now, of course, Johnny Depp is no Gene Wilder. He never will be. He wasn't as good as as uh, Willy Wonka. But I think he was alright as Willy Wonka. He did his own thing, and I appreciate it. But, of course, Gene Wilder is so much better. But, um, yeah... I think the only issue I have with this movie is actually the actor who plays Charlie, uh, Freddie Highmore, I think is his name. I don't really like his acting in the movie. It's very, like, very stale, robotic and stuff. It's, it, he doesn't feel human. All the other kid actors, though, they were pretty good. Um, and I also like the Oompa Loompas, uh, all played by Deep Roy. They're great. And here's a hot take. Now... Of course, I like the original movie better, but what I will say that one there's only one thing I do like better that the remake does that the original didn't, or at least I think what the original the remake did better than the original. There we go. Was the, I like the Oompa Loompa songs a lot better in the remake? Um, in the original, it's all exactly the same. It's the exact same song, just with lyrics change the oompa loompa doopa dee doo i'm gonna get copyrighted oh no <laughs> but but yeah um yeah I, I don't really like the oompa loompa songs in the original but i think they're all great in, in the remake it's all it, it's like four songs for each of the kids besides charlie of course and um, they're all great. They're all like very unique and stuff. They're really catchy too. Um, I will say, I actually grew up with this movie. And I remember as a kid, I think I might have watched the original once. As a kid, I actually liked this one better. But of course, as an adult, I liked the original so much better. In fact, I would even put the original in one of my favorite movies of all time, if I'm going to be honest. But. Um, but when I was a kid, I used to get those the Oompa Loompa songs from this movie stuck in my head all the time. I remember, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they're that they're that good. But yeah, I I like this movie. I don't think it's bad at all. Like I think it's 
pretty decent. Like, I think it's, as far as remakes go, of course it's not better, but it's still decent, you know? So, so yeah, like one of the better remakes that's still not better than the original, but still, you know, still good, in my opinion. Charlie and Chocolate Factory, that is number seven. Oh, great. I'm sorry, my back hurts, but I'll get through it. Number six, uh, my number six is uh, a movie that ma a lot of people, especially like a lot of cinephiles and whatnot, will put as their number one favorite Tim Burton movie, and they'll say that it's his best film. Um, of course, it's not my favorite, it's only my sixth favorite, um, but I will agree this is probably Burton's best film. That is Ed Wood. Uh, the movie to inspire, like, the Disaster Artist. Um, I do like the Disaster Artist, but, the, yeah, this movie's really good. Um, uh, Johnny Depp as Ed Wood is great. Uh, you also got uh, Patricia Arquette and um, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, also Bill Murray, and, uh, and of course, Martin Lando, too, as uh, Bella Lugosi, who won an Oscar for this movie. Um, I think it probably should have gone to Sam Jackson for Pulp Fiction, but... But still, though, he was still great in this movie. Um, yeah, really good movie. Really good um, movie that probably everyone should watch, especially if you're getting into the movie industry, because this is the kind of movie... Yeah, Ed Wood's movies is the kind of movie you don't want to make. So if you, if you want to be a director, I recommend watching this movie. But yeah, Ed Wood, really good movie. That's my number six. Number... Five. My number five is a very another very beloved Tim Burton film. Some might even put this at number one. I not quite, but it's it's made it in the top five. That is Beetlejuice. Uh, Beetlejuice. Beet. I'm not going to say it the third time. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and apparently it's getting a sequel too. We'll see how that goes. I'm kind of looking forward to it if I'm going to be honest because Burton's coming back. Keaton's coming back, Ryder's coming back, and even Danny Elfman's coming back. So I'm kind of looking forward to that because of them, but at the same time, you know, sequels and remakes and whatnot nowadays are not great, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but anyways, as for this movie, really good movie, uh, you know, Michael Keaton, it's the show stealer, it's Beetlejuice, but you also got Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin, they're both great, and Winona Ryder as well, as Lydia, um, even, even Catherine O'Hara and Jeffrey Jones, uh, don't like Jeffrey Jones as a person, but, you know, as an actor, he's fine, I guess, uh, but, but yeah, really cool movie, I love the effects in this movie a lot, um, it's just a really cool movie. Really funny, too. Beetlejuice, the character of Beetlejuice is hilarious. Um, yeah. Um, just not... It's not quite up there for being my Bur favorite Burton film, but I still really enjoy it. So, yeah, Beetlejuice, that is number five. Okay, coming in... Hold on, let me fix this. Okay. Yeah, close enough. Okay. Coming in at number four... We have a very underrated Tim Burton film. Although I think some people are starting to kind of recognize this movie nowadays. But actually my number three is even more underrated. But we'll get to that when we get to it. But my number uh, four is Big Fish. And yeah, this is a very unique film for Burton as well. Like Big Eyes. Uh, excuse me. Um, but yeah... It, Okay, this feels a little bit more like Burton than Big Eyes does, um, but there's still some stuff in it that makes me go, are you sure the Coen brothers didn't direct this movie? <laughs> because I don't know, there are some moments where it just reminds me of the Coen brothers for some reason. I don't know what it is. The humor is part of it, but also even the cinematography. Did Roger, De Roger Deakins, did he do the cinematography for this? I don't see it, but... but um, no, I, I don't see it, but uh, I don't know, though. It does kind of look like Roger Deakins might have done it or something, because it, it looks like a a Coen Brothers movie to me. But it's not, but still, it's still a really good Burton film. Uh, Hugh McGregor is great in this movie. Um, I don't really like Albert Finney all that much. Um, I don't know. His performance 
d- I didn't really care for. He was kind of creepy at some moments too, <laughs> but but and it's just kind of weird thinking that that was the exact same character that you McGregor played as well. I don't know. It's just kind of odd to me. Like, why didn't they just make you McGregor? You know, put him in makeup or something. I don't know. But I mean, they did it with Winona Ryder and Edward Scissorhands. So why not? I I don't know. But um. Anyway, so still a great film. Really weird movie, but I I like it a lot. Uh, Dan DeVito's also in it. He's really funny. Steve Buscemi's even in this movie. <laughs> Weirdly enough, but he's great. Um. Yeah, really cool movie, really weird movie, but really cool. Uh, Big Fish, that is my number four. Okay, coming in at number three. Now, I don't own this one. I need to get it, though. I was actually at, uh, I was getting some movies um, yesterday, but I didn't get this movie. I forgot about it, but I need to get this movie. My number three, in my opinion, this is his most underrated film. I just recently watched this uh, for the ranking, finally, and I loved it. I really, really enjoyed this movie. My number three is Miss Peregrine's Home for Particular Children. Yeah, you wasn't expecting this to be in the number three slot, were you? Well, here it is. I loved this movie, man. I loved it. It's just so cool. Uh, I love the world in this movie, and the story is awesome. The characters are awesome. Um, The performances, for the most part, are really good. Uh, Of course, Eva Green is great. I do kind of wish she got a little bit more screen time than she did, but she's still great in this movie. And... um, and uh, Sam Jackson is the villain. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson is in this movie, and he's the villain. And he is hilarious in this movie, and and he's fantastic as well. Um, I did kind of think Aza Butterfield wasn't great in the movie. Like, he definitely wasn't as good as he was in Hugo, but um, he was okay, I guess. I still liked the character, so, you know, he was, he was okay. Um, I also really like the actress who played Emma. I don't know her name, but the actress's name. But she was she was really great, and I think even my favorite character in the movie. But yeah, really cool movie, really awesome movie about these kids. Uh, these kids who have these powers. They're almost like mutants from X Men, but they're called Particulars. It's really cool. Um, it's not a, like it's not a great movie. But what makes this movie great, at least for me, like I said, is are the characters, the world, and the story. Like, I loved it. You know, it is it is flawed. Of course it is. But I, I don't know. I still don't really get why people didn't like this movie or just say it was okay. I thought it was great. I really loved this movie. And I'm, I need to get this movie. And I need to watch it again. It's... I loved it. I loved, yeah, I loved uh, Mrs. Miss Peregrine's Home for Particular Children, and that is um, number three. Okay, coming in at number two, we have a movie that I think a lot of people would probably put at number one, if not Ed Wood or Beetlejuice. That is Edward Scissorhands. Uh, this was, okay, this, I was, I was going to say that this was the first movie that I ever seen from Tim Burton. That's actually not true. My number one was actually my first. But I do remember, uh, I don't think I knew who Tim Burton was when I saw the other movie. But whenever I saw this movie, I started to know who Tim Burton was. Almost like, he was one of the few directors I knew as a kid, was Tim Burton. And I'm like, wow, this Tim Burton guy is great. But yeah, Edward Scissorhands is a great story. It's a great romance movie with some sprinkles of comedy and drama and horror and maybe even action. I don't know. But, yeah, it's still just a fantastic movie. Both Johnny Depp and Winona Ryder are both fantastic, have great chemistry together. I also like Alan Arkin in this movie as well. Uh, Rest in peace, I should say, to Alan Arkin. But he was really funny in this movie. Um, Just a really cool movie. It's funny, it's sad, it's... um, it, it's got everything. This is a movie that's got pretty much everything. Um, 
yeah, it's just an awesome movie. What can I say uh, that hasn't been said already about Edward Scissorhands? It's great. And it would be my number one if it wasn't for my number one. And maybe you're surprised. Maybe you're not. If you're if you're familiar with my channel, then you're probably not surprised because I have talked about this movie. I even done a uh, podcast episode of my podcast, Your Cousins Are Critics, with my cousin Cade. We watched this movie. Uh, that was one of the movies that we watched for our podcast. And so, yeah, my number one, if you haven't guessed already, probably have because it's the only one left. My number one is his debut film, and that is Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yes. I, I know it's kind of odd. It's kind of an odd choice to put this at number one for Tim Burton's films. But, of course, th this is, you know, my personal favorites. It's not what I think is the best. I would still probably put this in the top five if if I was to do it as, like, what are the best Tim Burton films. But, but you know, Ed Wood, um, Edward Scissorhands, maybe even Big, Big Fish as well. I think those are probably better made films. Maybe even Beetlejuice, too. But, but I... I, I love Pee Wee's Big Adventure. This is the one I, I rewatched the most, and I just love it. It's one of my favorite comedy movies. Um, and it's sad because, as I'm recording this, just recently, Paul Rubens passed away. And I did a tribute video to him, too. If you haven't watched that, check that out. But um, to, just talking about how much he meant to me and stuff, um, and how much this movie meant to me. Yeah, this movie means a lot to me um, because I watched this at a really young age with my brother. We rented it from our video store in our town, and and I liked it then, but I didn't like love it until I got older. It still stuck with me though. Even as a kid, I still thought about it every now and again. And then when I rewatched it, you know, when it came time to rewatch, I'm like, oh yeah, that, I need to watch that movie again. Once I watched it again, I just loved it. It. It's just a great movie. It's hilarious. Um, one of the funniest movies I've ever seen, without a doubt. Paul Rubens, uh, late great Paul Rubens, I should say, uh, is fantastic, of course, as Pee Wee. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just recently, by the way, watched, uh, I guess you can call it the sequel, maybe, uh, that is uh, Big Top Pee Wee. That movie was not as great as this. It wasn't even that good, to be honest, but... It definitely wasn't as good as this movie. This movie's fantastic. Um, E.G. Daly is in this movie as well, who is the voice of Tommy Pickles from Rugrats, just in case you didn't know. She's uh, Dottie, the love interest. You also got the, the dumb dude, the dumb fat dude from from um, uh, Leprechaun, who uh, plays Francis. He's hilarious. I love Large Marge. She's my favorite character in the movie. Be sure you don't large Marge stitch ya. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's there's some crazy characters in this movie. There's some weird-ass characters. And Pee-wee himself, of course, is weird. Um, but, yeah, this movie is just fucking hilarious. Like, every scene, there's not one scene in this movie that doesn't make me laugh. I, I love it. Uh, yeah. Pee-wee's Big Adventure is my personal favorite Tim Burton movie. Number one. Yeah. Uh, sorry if you can't see it real good, but... Yeah. Alright, there we go. There is my ranking for all of Tim Burton's films, ranked from my least favorite to favorite. Now, in the comments, uh, please give me your ranking for all of Tim Burton's films. If you haven't seen them all, that's fine. Just say what you... Or maybe rank the ones you have seen, or say what your favorite and least favorite Tim Burton films are. All right, um, so please like, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell, and I'll see you later. All right, peace. Wait, yeah, peace. <laughs>